Good evening and welcome to you all to this service of evening prayer on Tuesday the 14th of July. Hope you've had good days today. Um, you'll be pleased to know I've not had to rescue the cat out of a, another tree, so uh, we've managed to get through the day quite, uh, quite well. He's joined me in the study for most of the day, curled up on the chair, snoring. So um, all those people that I've been ringing today have just had to listen to Jupiter snoring in the background, which is made for interesting times. Today we have been remembering John Keeble, priest, Tractarian and poet from the uh, 1800s and for his life and example. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. A song of mercy and truth. O oh God, will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, O oh Lord, and grant us your salvation. Truly, his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness look down from heaven. Righteousness shall go before him, and direct his steps in the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and for ever. Amen. The appointed psalm for this evening is Psalm 107. We continue our run of quite long psalms. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, those he redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went astray in desert wastes, and found no path to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul was fainting within them. So they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He set their feet on the right way, till they came to a city to dwell in. Let, it, let them give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and the wonders he does for his children. For he satisfies the longing soul, and fills the hungry soul with good. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound fast in misery and iron. For they had rebelled against the words of God, and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed down their heart with heaviness. They stumbled, and there was none to help them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and out of the shadow of death, and broke their bonds asunder. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, and his wonders he does for his children. For he has broken the doors of bronze, and breaks the bars of iron in pieces. Some were foolish and took a rebellious way, and were plagued because of their wrongdoing. Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from destruction. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer him sacrifices of thanksgiving, and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Those who go down to the sea in ships, and ply their trade in great waters, these have seen the works of the Lord, and his wonders in the deep. For at his word the stormy wind arose, and lifted up the waves of the sea, they were carried up to the heavens and down again to the deep. 
their soul melted away in their peril. They reeled and staggered like a drunkard, and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were calmed. Then were they glad because they were at rest, and he brought them to the haven they desired. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. The Lord turns rivers into wilderness and water springs into thirsty ground. The fruitful land he makes a salty waste because of the wickedness of those who dwell there. He makes the wilderness a pool of water, and water springs out of a thirsty land. There he settles the hungry, and they build a settled to dwell, city to dwell in. <clears throat> they sow, sow fields and plant vineyards, and bring in a fruitful harvest. He blesses them, so that they may multiply greatly. He does not let their herds of cattle decrease. He pours contempt on princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. They are diminished and brought low through stress of misfortune and sorrow. But he raises the poor from their misery and multiplies their families like flocks of sheep. The upright will see this and rejoice, but all wickedness will shut its mouth. Whoever is wise will ponder these things and consider the loving kindness of the Lord. O living Christ, rescue us from foolish passion and still the storms of, of our self-will. And as you are our anchor in this life, so bring us to the haven you have prepared for us, for your mercy's sake. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verses 15, reading to chapter 2, verse 2. As I looked at the living creatures, I saw a wheel on the earth beside the living creatures, one for each of the four of them. As for the appearance of the wheels and their construction, their appearance was like the gleaming of beryl, and the four had the same form, their construction being something like a wheel within a wheel. When they moved, they moved in any of the four directions without veering as they moved. Their rims were tall and awesome, for the rims of all four were full of eyes all around. When the living creatures moved, the wheels moved beside them. And when the living creatures rose from the earth, the wheels rose. Wherever the spirit would go, they went, and the wheels rose along with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When they moved, the others moved. When they stopped, the others stopped, and when they rose from the earth, the wheels rose along with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Over the heads of the living creatures, there was something like a dome, shining like crystal, spread out above their heads. Under the dome, their wings were stretched out straight, one towards another, and each of the creatures had two wings covering its body. When they moved, I heard the sound of their wings like the sound of mighty waters, like the thunder of the Almighty, sound of tumults like the sound of an army. When they stopped, they let down their wings, and there came a voice from above the dome, over their heads. When they stopped, they let down their wings. And above the dome, over their heads, there was something like a throne, in appearance like sapphire, and seated above the likeness of the throne, was something that seemed like a human form. Upwards from what appeared like the loins, I saw something like gleaming amber, something that looked like fire enclosed all around. And downwards from what looked like the loins, I saw something that looked like fire, and there was splendour all around. Like the bow on a cloud on a rainy day, such was the appearance of the splendour all around. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. When I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard the voice of someone speaking. He said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. 
And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. Here ends our first reading. I suspect if I'd seen a vision looking something like we've described over the last two days, I too would fall on my face. Song of the Holy City I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them and they shall be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And the one who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. To the one who sits on the throne and the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15 to chapter 2, verse 4. Since I was sure of this, I wanted to come to you first, so that you might have a double favour. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia, and to come back to you from Macedonia, and have you send me on to Judea. Was I vacillating when I wanted to do this? Do I make my plans according to ordinary human standards? ready to say yes, yes, and no, no, at the same time. As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Silvanus and Timothy and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For in him every one of God's promises is a yes. For this reason it is through him that we say amen to the glory of God. But it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us by putting his seal on us and giving us his spirit in our hearts as a first instalment. But I call on God as witness against me. I was to spare you that I did not it was to spare you that I did not come again to Corinth. I do not mean to imply that we lord it over your faith, rather we are workers with you for your joy, because you stand firm in the faith. So I made up my mind not to make you another painful visit. For if I cause you pain, who is there to make me glad and the one whom I have pained? And I wrote as I did, so that when I came, I might not suffer pain from those who should have made me rejoice. For I am confident about all of you that my joy would be the joy of all of you. For I wrote to you out of much distress and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love that I have for you. Here ends our, first, our second reading. The Magnificat. In the heavenly kingdom, the blessed have their dwelling place and their rest for ever and ever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In the heavenly kingdom, the blessed have their dwelling place and their rest for ever and ever. So let us pray. So today, as we have remembered John Keeble, so we pray for his life, his work and his influence. We pray for his pastoral work and preaching. We pray for his guidance and leadership. We pray for the steadfastness, steadfastness of his faith. We give thanks for all institutions providing higher education, particularly theological colleges and training institutions. We pray for wisdom as they adapt to new ways of working, develop online learning resources, and find new ways to support and enable students to learn and develop. So we pray for those who are training in our theological colleges and the local institutions on full-time and part-time courses. We pray for the plans for the new Northwest Training Institution that will hopefully be set up in the coming years. We pray for all those who work in the vocations department, for Nick and his team. And we pray most especially for those who are discerning their vocations for those who are working with others to try to find out where God is leading them in their lives. We pray for all those who follow their vocation in life, whatever that vocation may be too. We thank you that you call us to different roles and responsibilities in life and that you, Lord, guide us in all that we say and all that we do. We give thanks for this day for all that it has brought us, and especially for those people that we have spoken to. Pray especially for those who've been thinking about their baptisms, for those families who have rearranged them, and for those that will be taking place in the coming months. We pray for those that we have been asked to pray for today. For those people that we carry in our hearts and minds, those people and places that we bring to you, Lord, now, for your peace, for your comfort and for your guidance. We continue to pray for our government and the leaders of all nations across our world, especially those who are at the forefront fighting this pandemic. We pray for wisdom for them that they would listen to advice and apply it wisely. We pray for the decisions they make on our behalf and for a clarity of judgment. We pray for our key workers, for those who've gone out to work and those who work from home. We pray for the different roles and responsibilities that they have in care, in providing for our needs, in working for the economy, for those who have the frontline jobs and those who work behind the scenes to make sure that our day-to-day -day lives can work and keep running. We pray for our schools, for our young people, for those who teach and for those who learn and for parents and carers who are homeschooling at this time. We pray for our young people as they prepare to either start school or move on from school. For those who will be going to college or university, those who feel anxious as they've been unable to have those transition days. We pray, Lord, that you would ease their fears and that they would know your presence as they work out what they are going to do in the future. We pray for those whose businesses have opened up this week and for those who are preparing to open in the coming weeks. We give thanks for our churches being able to open our doors for worship and for those who've joined us physically and virtually during this time of lockdown. We continue to pray for those who are furloughed and for those who have lost their employment, for those who find themselves amongst the most vulnerable in our society. 
And we continue to pray for the NHS, for its work. We pray for our local hospitals, for hospice, health centres, care homes and those who work in the community. And we pray for those who find themselves needing those services, for those who are in hospital and being cared for today, for those without whom they would not be able to remain in their own homes for the care that is provided. We pray for those who work in care homes, for those who support those who are most in need. And we pray for those who are in the hospice, for those who look after those coming to the end of their life. So we bring to you, Lord, those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We pray for Bridget, Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, Morris, Margaret, Joyce, Mary, Marion Walsh, Jordan and Joyce. As we name them and those in our hearts today before you, Lord, we ask for your healing touch to be upon them, that you would surround them with your love and compassion and that you would give strength to those who care for them. We pray also for those who have died, for those who've died recently, for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, and for those who have died this past day. We pray, Lord, that you would give strength and comfort to those who mourn, for those who carry that pain of bereavement with them. Father of the eternal word, in whose encompassing love all things in peace and order move. Grant that as your servant John Keeble adored you in all creation, so we may have a humble heart of love for the mysteries of your church and to know your love to be new every morning. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this service of evening prayer, either live or a little bit later on, as you've been able to watch the service. It's been good to have your company as ever. Do take care this evening, look after yourselves, stay safe, whatever this evening may be bringing you. And you remain as always in my prayers. Tomorrow we have our usual services of 9 o'clock morning prayer and 5 o'clock evening prayer if you're able to join me for either or both of those services.